Hi, I'm Glenn Rogers, and this is Biblical Insights. The title of our video today is Thinking Differently. Now, what do I mean by thinking differently? What's wrong with the way I think? Why do I have to think differently? Well, in the last couple of videos that we've made, uh, we've been talking about how we change as Christians, how we grow, specifically how we become less like our old sinful selves and more like God. And in our last video, which was entitled More Like God, uh, we, we read what Peter had to say to us from 2 Peter uh, chapter 1, verses 3 through 11, about participating in the divine nature and, and actually changing so that we can be more like God. Well, if, if we think about that, though, for a, a little bit, and we don't think about it very long, before we realize that yeah, that's going to be hard to do, you know, because we're human beings and we have a human nature and we have challenges and we sin quite often. So how, you know, what is this process of uh, becoming more like God? Well, it involves a number of different things. One of the things it involves is learning how to think differently. And Paul understood this, and he talked about it in his letter to the Romans. We're going to be reading from Romans 12, 1 and 2. We'll read from the Simplified New Testament, as we normally do. So let's listen to what Paul has to say here about the importance of our thought processes in learning to change and to grow and to become more like God. Paul says, so then, my brothers and sisters, considering the mercy God has shown you, does it not make sense that you give yourselves to him completely, becoming a living sacrifice, keeping yourselves apart from the sinful ways of the world? That is the sensible and truly spiritual way to worship and serve God. You cannot uh, live like people of the world. You must be a changed people living differently because you learn how to think differently, developing a new perspective on life. Your new perspective, then, will help you understand God's will and how he wants you to live. You see, what Paul is saying there, in essence, is because of what God has done for you, you are obligated, you have an obligation to respond to him and to uh, thank him, to worship him, to serve him. And the way you do that is by giving yourself to him. Under the old covenant, people brought sacrifices. And there were lots of different kinds of sacrifices. There were grain offerings and, and, and vegetable offerings of different kinds. And uh, people would tithe 10% even of the things in their garden. They would give 10% of whatever they grew. And that would become part of, of what went to the temple to support the, the work of the, uh, the temple and the priesthood. Uh, people <coughs> gave in, in very literal ways, and there were sacrifices of, of um, animals of all sorts. And, uh, you know, that was fine for that time. Uh, it's what God asked for, and, and so the people did that. But under the new covenant, all of that has been put away. It's been set aside. And now we offer something different. We don't offer animal sacrifices anymore, but we still sacrifice. Well, what? What do we sacrifice? Well, we sacrifice ourselves. We give ourselves to God in service to him which usually means in service to others. So that's, that's one of the important ways that we serve God. But Paul is saying, <clears throat> but to facilitate that process, for that to really work, for us to serve effectively, for us to worship in a truly spiritual way, it takes something else. It takes something additional. Something has to be going on there. What? Well, it, it takes a new way of thinking. You have to think differently. If you're going to live differently, you have to think differently, you see. And that's, that's a key idea. When you become a Christian, you're a new person. 
the old person was dead, and so in baptism it symbolizes a burial, right? And then you come up out of the water, you're a new person. You're supposed to live a new life, right? Well, you can't live in new ways if you're still thinking in old ways. See, that doesn't work. You can't think like the old person and then live like the new person. If you want to have a new way of living, you must also have a new way of thinking. And, and, and this is something that Paul understood quite well because, you know, he struggled with, with being a new person himself. It talks about this in, in Romans chapter 7, beginning in verse 14. He talks about his own struggle with sin and how hard it is to truly put that away and, and be a, a new person. But one of the things you do to facilitate that process is learn to think in new ways. Now, you couldn't really hear it or, or, or see it in my translation of this verse, but in the actual Greek, there's a, a, a word in there where it says you have to change. The, the Greek word is metamorphosis. And it's, uh, it's a process that I remember learning about when I was in, in school. And if you've ever uh, seen how a caterpillar will spin a cocoon around itself, and then it lives in that cocoon for a period of time <clears throat> until it changes, and then the cocoon breaks open, and, and it emerges not as a caterpillar, but as a butterfly. Okay, That change from a caterpillar to a butterfly is the process of metamorphosis, and that is the Greek word that Paul uses here. So there, there is to be a, a change from the old person to the new person. Instead of being a, a, a furry old caterpillar, you're supposed to be a beautiful new butterfly. Okay, now that, that's just a metaphorical image. We, we realize that. But what it does is it helps us understand how dramatic the change is between the old person and the new person. And that kind of a change must be rooted in a change of thinking. Only when you change the way you think about things can you actually change the way you live. You see? And so in Philippians 4, and we'll talk about that verse in another video at some point, Paul talks about we need to think about good things. You know, don't don't be afraid, don't be worried and anxious, but but think about <coughs> excuse me, think about good things. And, and this will help you have inner peace, right? We'll talk about that in one of our future videos. But how you think as a Christian is, is so important. Most people don't realize how important it is. Your thought processes make you the person you are. If you think a certain way, you're going to act that way. If you want to act differently, you have to learn to think differently. See, And that's what Paul is saying. Okay, well, how should we change our thinking? How, I mean, you know, we grew up and we learned to think this way. How, how are we going to think differently? How do, how do we do that? Well, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry, I still have a cough. I can't quite get over. I, I apologize for my coughing. Um, if we really want to think well and think differently in, in this process of becoming more like God, the person that we need to imitate, that we need to be like, our example, is Jesus. You see, one of the reasons for the incarnation, one of the reasons God became a human in the person of Jesus, was to show us how to live. Now, his ultimate purpose was to offer himself in sacrifice so that sins could be forgiven. We understand that. But, you know, he, he lived a long time before he did that, and he carried on a very significant ministry for about three years before all those things uh, at the end happened. And what he was doing while he was doing that basically is showing us how to live. That's, that's what Jesus was doing. He is our supreme example of how to live a godly life, how to be the kind of person that God wants us to be. Right? And so we need to learn, simply put, to think like Jesus. Well, yeah, but I, Jesus isn't around. We can't sit down and talk with him 
and ask him about thinking. Well, yeah, that's true. We can't really. He's not physically here, but he's still here in the pages of the Bible. He's still here in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, in the Gospels. So the more you read the Gospels over and over and over and over again, the more you read the Gospels, the more you'll understand about Jesus, the more you'll get him, and, and he'll get inside your head, and he'll be in there, and, and he'll be an example for you so you can learn to act like he acted and think like he thought, you see? And, and then you need to pray. You need to ask God, help me. Lord, help me. Learn to think differently. Help me learn to think like Jesus. See, that, that's really it. And because you have the gift of the Holy Spirit, when you were baptized and you were, you were given the gift of the Holy Spirit, then you have God living in you. And, and when you say, man, I, I need to learn to think differently, Lord, help me learn to think differently. Help me learn to think like Jesus. He will. It, it won't happen overnight. You know, you're not going to lay down one night and God come and open up your head and pour in knowledge and wisdom and then close your head up. So when you get up in the morning, you go, oh, this is the new me. Now I can think like you. That doesn't work like that. <laughs> we know it doesn't, right? It, it takes time. It, it, it happens in small increments, a little at a time. But it does happen. And you do change and you grow and you mature. And you become more like God because you're learning to think like God and learning to understand what God wants. And Jesus was God living as a human being, showing us how to live, showing us how to think, showing us how to interact with people, showing us how to understand what was truly right and good and acceptable. You see, And, th and that's what Paul is saying in this verse. We need to enjoy our relationship with God but part of that process of becoming more like God includes learning new ways to think. So think about those things for the next few days. And while you're doing that, read your Bible, pray, go to church, and may God bless. <laughs>